Looking this over, I realize it may not be completely clear what is going on. Uh, if you've read other books by Descartes, especially the Meditations, um, a lot of this territory is gone over there, and it's, it's more clear. Um, but what, what is going on? I mean, he's talking about tearing down cities and whether one person building something is better than a group of people. Um, what is he doing? He's starting over. I mean, he has declared his education a failure. He doesn't know. He knows that he's wrong about a lot of things, and he's not even sure that he knows anything. So, so if you're really interested in finding out whether you know something, what's the best strategy? Uh, start over. Throw it all out and start over from the beginning. And the promise is that if you just stick to what you really know and you reason upon that basis, then you can't go wrong. Because the idea being that if you if you have truths, you know these self let's say self evident first principles, and you reason validly only, uh, you know according to what actually validly follows from them, then your conclusion should be true as well. I guess that's the idea. So what does he do? Um, he's not, you know, he's saying he, this is just his way is to start over, to tear down everything that he is in his mind that he thinks he might know and just, just, just start over on a more secure foundation. And, uh, he comes up with certain rules for proceeding. Uh, in the first method, he says, by these considerations, I'm right here, I was induced to seek some other method which would comprise the advantages of the three and exempt from their defects. He's talking about the three uh, being logic, algebra, and geometry. And as a multitude of laws often only hampers justice so that a state is best governed, when with few laws there are, they are these are rigidly administered. In like manner, instead of the great number of precepts of which logic is composed, I believe that the four following would prove perfectly sufficient for me. So these four rules, and I got to say, it's the first one that philosophers have really thought to be much more important. The second, the third, and the fourth um, are not really very radical. They're not really very substantive. It's this first one that we'll be concentrating on. Very controversial. He says, the first was never to accept anything for true, which I did not clearly know to be such. That is to say, carefully to avoid precipitancy and prejudice and to comprise nothing more in my judgment than what was presented to my mind so clearly and distinctly as to exclude all ground of doubt. So never to accept any, this is the primary rule, really. Again, we'll look at the second, third, and fourth, but the, this is the really the groundbreaking one and the controversial one philosophically. Never to accept anything for true which I did not clearly know to be such. Now that's begging the question, right? Of course, you know how do you how do you know something to be true? You know, if I if I know something to be true, I'm going to accept it. Um, but how do I know? it to be true. And he gives us a kind of an answer to that later when he says to comprise nothing more in my judgment than what was presented to my mind so clearly and distinctly as to exclude all ground of doubt. And this is where the controversy comes in. The, the criterion for something to be known is that you know it so clearly and so distinctly that there's absolutely no ground to doubt it. That is, it's incapable of being doubted. And the idea is that if you start there with principles that are undoubtable and that you, you perceive clearly and distinctly so that you find it it's impossible to doubt their truth, that would be the place to start. And, you know, and then <clears throat> the, the, the rest of the thing is just about, you know, checking your work and being orderly in your thinking. Uh, it's the first one uh, that's really philosophically the most interesting.